Cary Grant, an old school gentleman, and how today's men could learn a thing or two from him. Cary Grant. Hi. Malagrini, Shuki Doogie. Yeah, that's right. Cary Grant. Now I'm going to get into this, but first, my name is Timothy Sands. And to all the lucky early subscribers, welcome back. And if you're new here, I present content to help men present their best selves. If that intrigues you, subscribe if you're so inclined. Now let's talk about being an old school gentleman. TV has had a huge impact on our lives. And as much as we like to aspire to reading books and just looking at paintings on walls for our stories and for our inspiration, TV actually dominates over all of that. Now, of course, internet is changing everything. YouTube is starting to become a huge impact. And even just social media conglomerates are starting to really, really change the scope of things. But Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, high grade narrative, that really is something that we still are guided by and we use as inspiration, right? For me and for a lot of people out there, 90s television and 90s comedies had a huge impact on me. And it had a lot to do with how I modeled my life, how I was inspired, and how I got a lot of my information. And I'd like to think that it was just pure passive entertainment, but it also kind of dug into my subconscious and affected me. And one of the effects was the men in these comedies. Right off the top of my head, there would be Home Improvement was a huge impact. Friends was a hum huge impact. Frasier was a huge impact. Even Everybody Loves Raymond. Something that I kind of noticed that was a common theme through all of that were the men were bumbling idiots in pretty much most of those and really, really horrible with women and actually quite, quite insecure around women. Now, don't be wrong. There was some great stories around that, some great comedy around that. But the fact that it was endlessly propagated over and over and over again, I think it had a huge impact, especially on me. Let's just take a look at the obvious one, Friends, right? I couldn't even get through the first season because Ross was so annoying and he was such a, he had such a hard time just trying to convey his feelings to Rachel that I just stopped watching. Now, the ironic thing is uh, for comfort and nostalgia, my wife and I are now watching it on HBO Max. And now that I'm rewatching it, it's funny because I didn't realize Chandler was also a moron with women and quite insecure around them. Joey was the only one that wasn't, and there really is no explanation for it. He just was good with women. I absolutely love Frasier, but there's pretty much 90% of the show where we watch Niles pine after Daphne, and somehow Daphne doesn't even know this for all the seasons. Again, good television. Not saying it's bad television, but it was something that kind of had an impact, obviously. Let's even talk about the, the images of the men who were married at that time. Uh, Tim the Tool Man Taylor, pretty much most of those seasons, we watched the wife roll her eyes at him. Everybody Loves Raymond, pretty much the same story. And King of Queens, well, you get my drift, right? These models of men not exactly succeeding and being pretty much bumbling idiots, this was a common theme and, and continuously propagated. I really do think it had an impact because eventually I got tired of it and I was complaining about it to someone and they go, oh, hey, you know what you should do? You should just watch old black and white movies. Uh, I was like, why? And they're like, oh yeah, the depiction of men in those movies is a lot different. I was like, all right, whatever. I didn't believe them. So I'm starting to watch these black and white movies and I see this character that I just was like, oh, I love this guy and it's Cary Grant. And I just started eating up his movies because I'm going, oh yeah, I like, I like this poise. I like this strength. I like this, like when he's in a moment, he doesn't fall apart and especially around women. And so I'm going, oh yeah, I love this stuff. But I couldn't, I couldn't quite put my finger on why I liked his style so much until quite a few years back, I'm here in LA and you know, at the border, you pretty much have to get headshots and, and join an acting class. So I was in an acting class and there was a scene that I had to do and it was between me and a lady. And the, the context of the scene was we were both attracted to each other. And so when I started the scene, I, I walk up and I, 
and I'm playing this kind of like nervousness because I'm, I'm just finally meeting her and, and I'm kind of agitated and right away the acting teacher stops the scene. And I'm like, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Am I messing up the lines? What's going on? He goes, what are you doing? I go, uh, what do you mean? Are you nervous? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little nervous. He's like, are you portraying nervous as the character? And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm portraying the nervousness. He's like, why? And I'm like, well, because she's hot. And, and that's how men act around hot women. And he's like, no, no, don't do that. Stop doing that. Because I want you to walk onto the scene and I want you to be assured of yourself and confident. And so I flipped the scene around, I walked on and, and, I, and I played this very, very different character that was put together and poised. And for a moment, for a moment, I felt like I was channeling Cary Grant. And that's obviously why that person recommended black and white movies. He's like, get out of this, get out of your head. Stop watching these doofuses in the 90s act like idiots around women. But I do think that had a huge impact on how we think as men, and especially a men around my age and men who were impacted by 90s comedies. And when I met Megan, I feel like that's why I was successful with her because I wasn't playing or not even, I was channeling something more than just being this nervous, I didn't know how to put myself together. I had finally become confident with myself and realized, nah, 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 I don't need to, I don't need to be Ross. I don't need to be Chandler. I can be a confident man who knows how to deal with this. So yeah, that's why I think being an old school gentleman is something we should all aspire to. And I'm even talking about Humphrey Bogart, Clark Gable, those guys, that was a different time. And there was a different like stance that these men took. And I really think that that strength that they portrayed wasn't this dominance over women. The His Girl Friday one was a great newspaper story. And again, they, they go toe to toe. There's no like, oh, I'm the man and you're the female and I know what's going on here. You know, and it was just such a good banter between the two. And, and I, I just feel like that's what not only men should aspire to, but I feel like a lot of women would love to see in men today. I think the biggest reason I gravitated towards him is because the main costume person at the time, the costume designer, was Edith Head. She said Cary Grant had the greatest fashion sense of any actor that she worked with. And of course, you know me, I'm loving that. So I do hope you can take something away from this video. It's something I really care about. It's something that really inspires me. And obviously I talk a lot about Cary Grant here. So I thought I'd figure at least I make a video about him. So if you like this video, I think you'll like this video right here. It's about why I think all men should wear fashion glasses. That's right. Kind of change your perspective on that. And as usual, always remember, never forget style first. All right. See you next week. Or should I say, see you on the flip side. Mwah.